Welcome back. We're now going to move our drive script from all the tires onto the car parent. How did you go working out that for yourself? So it's pretty straightforward. First of all, we want to select all of our colliders and take that drive script off. So just remove the component from there. Now the wheels shouldn't have it on there because they're just the meshes. So now let's grab the drive script and drag and drop it onto your car parent. So it's here. Now the drive script needs to know about all the wheel colliders and all the wheel meshes. So let's open it up and pass all of those things through. So the first one at the top is wheel collider, which was a single wheel collider. We can actually change that to an array of wheel colliders. And then for our wheel itself, we want a public game object array for our wheel. So it's actually wheels, isn't it? Let's make it plural and we'll make that one plural too. Get rid of that single wheel that's still sitting down in there. Now for the start, we won't need to do a get component on anything. We're going to actually set these up via the inspector so we can remove that. And then in the go, which is where both of those objects are being used, one here and one down here, we actually need to do something like a bit of a for loop to uh, work through all of those. So let's do it just above here for int i equals zero, i is less than four because there's four wheels and then i plus plus. And let's have a squiggly bracket there and then one after this one down here. Okay, so this will be wheel colliders i and then the next one, copy wheel colliders i wheel colliders i and then wheels i and wheels i down there. This is going to work pretty much the same as we already had as far as turning everything. Now currently this steering is occurring on all of your wheel colliders which is going to affect all of your wheels because they're set according to the wheel colliders. So instead of being able to steer all of your wheels you just want to the first two wheel colliders. So we're going to say if i is less than two, which means that we've got the first two wheel colliders, the one in zero and the one in the position one of your array, then we will allow those to be affected by the steer. Otherwise we won't. And then down here, your wheels will only get affected by their associated wheel colliders. Okay, so save that. Now let's go back over into Unity. Click on your car parent where you'll now find that script attached. So the wheel colliders are up here and the wheels are down here. So there's four colliders. Let's put a four in here. And there's also four wheels. Put a four in here. Now you don't want to just shift select these and drag and drop them into your array because they won't be in the right order. Remember the first two need to be your front two wheels. So we want the front right collider and then the front left collider and then we'll put the back right collider and the back left collider and then the wheels in the same order because they're affecting each other in turn. So we want the front right mesh, the back, uh, sorry, the front left mesh the back right mesh and the back left mesh. Okay, so now let's press play and let's see if we can turn just the front wheel. So there we go. And now we have a front driving, very unstable as you can see their vehicle um, because of the center of mass and other things. But uh, you can have a bit of a play with that. This, this would obviously need to be a wider body vehicle if you don't want it to tip over as mine did just there. But at this point, we now have our drive script separate from everything else that's going on, which is nice. It's just in the one spot. And so each vehicle can have just the drive script put on its parent. Okay, so we're at the point now where I think... You've passed your learner's test for driving. We're going to move on to using a model of a real car and the car that we're going to be using in our kart racing game. 
Okay, you're ready to try out a real car model. So what you're going to do is undertake a challenge, but let me show you how to sort of set it up first and give you a bit of a guidance. We want to set up a whole bunch of car models and drivers in those cars because you want to have those in your kart race, obviously. Now, we've already got pretty much, and I know it's very basic, a car that works, which is our cube on wheels. So first of all, what I want you to do is to grab hold of your car parent and drag and drop that into your assets to make it into a prefab that you'll be able to use over and over again. Now, the one in the hierarchy we're actually going to modify. So just select it, right click and go down to unpack prefab completely to split it away from that other prefab so that when you modify this, it doesn't change your prefab. There's an asset pack attached to this lecture called carts.unity package. If you're watching this on YouTube, then you won't have access to the vehicle that I'm about to use in here. However, if you have a look in the Unity Asset Store, you'll find a lot of free vehicles that you can use. And I do know for certain that this little orange cartoon car does work because I've used it many times before. Bring that into your project. You'll get a cars folder and in there you'll find a whole bunch of prefabs of cars and Jeeps and drivers. Now these have been kindly donated by Mikhail who has a really great site on the Unity Asset Store with heaps of low poly cars and drivers. So please check out his content and drop him a note and say thank you very much for letting us have these great assets to use in our game and make sure that you don't actually use these for commercial purposes they're just for using in this course and for creating things you know of your own that you want to use or show off so we've got those now what we're going to do is just have a look at one of them before we jump straight into making a working car so just get one of them doesn't matter which one of the prefabs so this purple jeep I'm just going to turn this car parent off so that we can have a look at this Jeep without anything else in the road. Now, if you open up the Jeep in the hierarchy and have a look at what's all attached to it and go digging through it, you'll see that there's a car body object, which is just a transform for the center of the car position. The actual Jeep mesh itself, if you come up a little bit higher to Jeep, you'll see it in the inspector. It's a skinned mesh renderer. Now, this might sound fine to use, but in fact, it's not. The issue with a skinned mesh render is that it's controlled by an armature or an animation system. And these Jeeps are all on an animation system. We're not using that. We're using our code and the physics system to drive our cars around. Now, although if you go to the car body and actually click on these uh children like there's a w underscore one dot left and right these are the positions of the center of the tires they're not actually meshes for the tires the tires are down here and you'll see those they're also skinned mesh renderers now if you try to use this as it is with our little car setup you'll find that it doesn't work quite rightly because you can't move skinned mesh renderers with the type of code that we're using. In fact, you can change the transform part up here, but the mesh itself is controlled by animations and you get into all sorts of trouble. So although this kind of looks okay, it's not going to work for our needs. And you actually have to unpack the whole thing to use it with our car parent. Okay, so we're not actually going to use that. So I'm just going to delete it. Turn your car parent back on. Now we could possibly change the car body, which is currently a cube for our mesh filter. And let's just select that mesh and have a look what we've got to select from. So if we just go up a bit higher here, you'll find that you've got um, some car bodies and Jeep bodies to select. If we select our car body and replace that for our cube, you can see that it's very, very, very tiny. It's just in there. Uh, see if we can get in a little bit closer over in this view. Whoop, it's there. So you'd have to 
rescale it and rotate it and all sorts of things. Now, because it's actually apparent to other things, it's going to mess around with those. And yep, that's not going to be very nice. And then you have to add the materials and all that onto it. So we're not going to do it that way either. So let's just go back to our cube. Okay. And what I've done instead is I've actually taken these Jeep models and the car model into Maya and I've deleted the armature for you to make life a little bit easier. And you're going to find those particular models in the models folder. You're looking for car, no arm and Jeep, no arm. So no armature. If you drag and drop one of those into your scene, you'll see that you now got a Jeep. And if you look in the hierarchy, all you've got is your Jeep and your wheels here. And now these, if they're not skin mesh renderers, which they're not, can be used instead of the other models. Now, the first thing we need to do that I taught you way back earlier is that we want to know that our car is kind of real world size. Oops, I just grabbed the chassis there. didn't mean to. Now, let me just move this out next to our car parent. The car parent was created with a unit cube. So we know that it's at least one meter high. And if we put our little Jeep next to there, you can see that the Jeep is probably about the right size for a Jeep. So we don't need to do any rescaling in this case. So the easiest way to turn this Jeep into a drivable car is to take all the parts of the Jeep and attach them to the appropriate parts of your car parent. So this Jeep here, for example, okay, the one that has the chassis of the Jeep, if we drag and drop that onto the car body, okay, won't let us do that. First of all, we need to get rid of the prefab. So just right click, unpack prefab completely, grab that Jeep chassis, drag and drop it onto the car body. Now it's just here. What we want to do is now just move it across so that it's where you would expect the car body to be. Now don't worry about the wheels for now. Just press play. And because the cube's driving around and the chassis is attached to the cube, we can now move that car body. And you'll be able to do exactly the same thing for each of the wheels. And of course, the wheels will then need to be repositioned into the correct places. So uh, once you've done that, you can actually go back to the car body itself, which is your cube, and just turn off the mesh renderer so that you don't see that part of it. The same with the wheels. I mean, you could use the wheels that we've already used, but if you want to use the actual Jeep wheels, you can attach those, align them up, move them into the correct place. Don't forget that you'll also have to move the colliders as well so that they line up. And then just turn off the mesh renderers on the existing wheels and you'll have a drivable Jeep. So this is your challenge. What I'd like you to do is grab the Jeep or the car, which is the car no arm or the Jeep no arm, and reconfigure it using the car parent so that you have a drivable version of one of those vehicles. So pause the video now, go off and do that. When we come back, I will go through and complete this process and show you the driving Jeep. Welcome back. How did you go with that challenge? Do you now have a Jeep that you can drive around? Well, let me show you how I would put it together. Right, so we have our car parent. We've already put the body with the Jeep on there. So we took the Jeep chassis from the old Jeep structure and copied and added it to the car body. Now we need to do it for each of the wheels and the wheel colliders. But before we do, let's put them into the right position. Right, so let's just work on this particular wheel here. Okay, so this is your front right mesh. You want the front right collider with it. So just control or command select the collider and the mesh so that you've got both of them. 
and let's just reposition it now I'm not going to be too fussy about where I put this but let's just put it like that then let's do this back one and let's move that out notice I'm only moving them in the X and the Z direction so that they're still all level on the ground of course you could put them up higher it's not going to matter it will just give the vehicle different driving dynamics okay so we want the next one which is this one over here okay so at some point in mine I've just noticed that my wheel and the actual collider for it which is this one have become unaligned so let me just modify that and move it across so that it's over that actual tire which is a little difficult with this particular tire sitting over it which is going to be our right one let me just move out out of the road and we'll just come back here and just make sure that they're aligned nicely okay now we're not adjusting these wheels with respect to uh, the actual colliders center value so these ones here don't touch those when you're moving it so you just want to be using the game object that you're moving and you're keeping it on those particular tires okay but we'll come back and check those after we've added the new tire meshes right so for each of these tire meshes you've got this jeep so it's the forward left tire you want to drag and drop that onto your forward left mesh for the tire then you've got your forward right and this one is your back left and this one is the back right now they're not in the right spot we want to zero them on to the parents that they're on so just again control select them or command if you're on a Mac and position them at zero 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 and that's going to put them in the same spot okay now the actual meshes that were there before which are on their parents if you want to control select those you can turn off the mesh renderers so that those tires are now gone you can even get rid of the actual mesh filter and the mesh render if you want to remove those components now that they're like that we could probably just quickly go through all of our colliders and make sure that they are where you think they are they need to be sitting nice and neatly around all of the tires so remember that it's going to be the green section that hits the ground and therefore the mesh is going to sit within it otherwise your mesh is going to look like it's sitting up in the air or it could actually sink through the ground okay and then we want our other two now this one here is not quite aligned so I'm just going to press F and move its game object over and let's make sure it's in the middle of the tire and then the front one here let's just check that out yep you should really just be able to see right at the bottom that little sphere object which is where we add our forces to all right so once that's all ready to go press play and you should have a drivable and turnable jeep as you can see there the last thing that you'll want to do is select your jeep itself and just have a look at the collider on it so the collider that's going to represent this jeep is actually back on the car body with the rigid body we want to make this the same size as that chassis okay so go over to the inspector and for its box collider click on the edit collider and then just drag this out so that you've got a box collider that kind of represents the size of your chassis or wherever you want that collision to occur on it okay that's not too bad make sure also that you have it at the bottom of the chassis here not on the ground if it's on the ground it will drag and it'll make it more difficult to drive the car around and if you want to put something over the top of this uh, roll cage then you can also add another box collider and edit it 
and just bring it up and resize it around that area to give you some extra collision. Okay, right, so uh, there is a Jeep. Thanks for watching. Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.